Hello and welcome to a special interview at the Hindu. I am Nagesh Prabhu. As Karnataka goes to polls on May 10, today we have a special guest, senior Congress leader Dinesh Gundurao. Dinesh Gundurao has been representing Gandhinagar constituency in the Karnataka Legislative Assembly since 1999 for five consecutive terms. He was the minister in the Siddharamaya government during 2013 and 18. He served as the president of the Karnataka Pradesh Congress Party. Welcome to the show, sir. So, Bangalore contributes more than 60% of the income to the state's total economy. So, how this Karnataka election is significant for your party in this election? Oh, uh, definitely this is a very important election for the Congress because uh, uh, this is a state uh, where Congress has got very strong roots, strong organization and uh, it is a state that we can win on our own. And it will definitely, you know, help the Congress party nationally also if uh, the Congress party wins in Karnataka. So it has a lot of implications, I feel, not just for uh, Karnataka, but also at the national level. But since you are representing Bangalore constituency for the last five terms, how is this significant for ba particularly in, from the Bangalore perspective? No, Bangalore is definitely an important, um, one of the most important uh, cities of the country. And also it's a world city. So, that the growth and development of Bangalore uh, is a must and uh, proper planning and proper uh, uh, infrastructure and better transportation, all these are major issues. So, I think good governance because Bangalore city's development is very much based on uh, the, uh, the state government's performance. It's interconnected because the city administration is more or less controlled by the state government, not by the uh, corporation. So, it requires a very good government in the, at the state to be able to help Bangalore be, uh, achieve its fuller uh, its fullest potential. So, I think these elections will, uh, will also have a very big, big, very big bearing for the city. What are the issues Congress is focusing in particularly in Bangalore since Bangalore has 28 seats? See, Bangalore's uh, city's uh, uh, development uh, in a planned way is most important. I think when our manifesto which will be released, uh, we'll be talking about in detail. But I think, see, we need to plan the growth of Bangalore. A lot of the problems that we, have, we are facing in Bangalore is because of lack of proper planning. And, uh, our, uh, and if you don't have a proper vision and a proper plan, then the growth becomes uncontrolled, haphazard. So you have, you know, uh, commercial and residential and, uh, and, you know, all the other green areas being overlapped or being uh, ecologically being destroyed. So that is very important and transportation, you know, that is a key. Public transport is a key, very much one of the key things for Bangalore city because good public transport is a, a, is a, a bare, I mean, it's a necessity for a, for a good city and Bangalore's biggest problem is traffic. So we need to improve the tra public transport and we need to have, uh, we need to see that the peripheral ring road is implemented. It, we've been talking about it for a very long time. So we need to see that that road because that will also decongest the city and uh, see that the pace of metro work continues at its pace, in increase it also. And uh, of course, suburban rail has been going on. Unfortunately, till now, nothing has been, nothing has happened. So we need to focus on that and, uh, you know, have a more cleaner environment and uh, a cleaner uh, city. The, so transport, environment and planning, these will become the key aspects. See, irrespective of the party in power, Bangalore has been facing bottlenecks, infrastructure bottlenecks. So, is it uh, quick fix solutions uh, cause the problems or uh, absence of long term solutions uh, taking into potential population growth? How how you handle this Bangalore problem? As you see, Bangalore problem has been that I think that uh, apart from few governments, uh, I can remember SM Krishna's government which really thought about Bangalore in a in a, a bigger, broader uh, broader way especially after post-liberalization. Pre-liberalization, -li Bangalore was a, uh, was a wonderful city. It was a, a, a pensioner's paradise, beautiful city to live in. But after the liberalization process started, it saw rapid growth, tremendous fast quick growth. So we were not able to keep a pace with that growth. So growth became uncontrolled. But now, again during Siddharamaya's government, we saw a lot of uh, you know, planning going in, uh, and work going into the city. So I think what we need to do now is to see that Bangalore gets uh, a special treatment by the government and focused treatment separate from what the government does across the state. And for that, though we have a minister for Bangalore city, but that there should be a fully dedicated team 
combine not just political leaders but also professionals planners engineers you know those who understand uh, how what a city needs and it needs a combination of legislators good officers and professionals and that is what i think uh, we should do mm -hmm. do you think uh, bjp government has failed to handle or govern the city yeah yeah they have totally failed because they they have had no vision at all they have had no planning no discussion no deliberation uh, in fact the chief minister holds the bangalore development portfolio and unfortunately i don't see him having ever called for a meeting of all the stakeholders of all the legislators and to discuss what we need to do for bangalore city you not even done even even once and it's all driven by projects let's do this project uh, and uh, uh, and it's more based on uh, getting some fund sanction for their co constituencies not thinking of the whole city where bjp mlas are there they are grabbing funds in thousands of crores where other mlas are there like myself opposition party mlas so many other like uh, from congress and jds they were given paltry sums so you know this kind of a political approach to the development and without any discussion planning and without and no bbmp also they have purposely stalled the entire uh, bbmp elections it's just run by officers now so a lot of and uh, you even look at the bda today bda is in a bad shape because so much corruption it's become corruption has hit uh, the ceiling so Uh, all these uh, organizations have, are collapsing bda bbmp bmrda nobody you know there is no discussion no no planning and it's all based on how much money you can make how much commission mm -hmm. you can take how much funds i can take for my constituency that's what bangalore's uh, governance has become okay your party has already promised four guarantees if it comes to power and it required around 50000 crore per year will it sufficient or will it not affect the spending on infrastructural growth if if you are going to implement the five guarantees see all these i think once the uh, we have announced these five guarantees and this will be implemented by the congress party because this is a uh, a guarantee that we made to the people of the state and there is no going back on that but i think there are so many other ways which once you once the uh, plan or once the schemes are announced you will realize that there will be some other ways of recouping the funds also mm -hmm. in some other uh, methods will be there and ultimately one is power the way say 200 units free for those people who are uh, who it's for a plus for everybody who wants it can take it then even the 2000 rupees that we give to a family ultimately that money also will go back into spending okay it go, goes back into you know either they'll buy medicines or they'll pay school fees or they'll uh, you know daily go essentials so it goes back into the system and the one of the basic uh, reasons for why we've done this is is that see today the taxation system in this country has become skewed against the common man against the um, lower middle class middle class and poor people what's happening is the rich are not being taxed enough there's low taxes are being lowered there and they have they have various ways and means of avoiding to pay tax using some loophole or the other and uh, the indirect taxes which now we are taxing the rich and the poor in the same uh, same uh, in the same manner so the poor are being taxed if you go per capita tax if you take the proportion mm -hmm. of of their incomes the poorer man's income is being taxed at the rate of almost 60 70% because whatever he buys now is a big share of his income where if the rich man if he, if he buys a liter of milk mm -hmm. the rich man or a poor man the rich man's his per capita tax proportion is far less than a poor man's so the taxation has become very big now we are saying gst revenues are very high why is it so high because the tax has gone up and everybody is being taxed at a very high rate so our thing is these tax revenues also should be should go back to the people in some manner so if congress come to power you will work on this taxation system see this is gst now see this is a very large subject nagesh because gst now has actually taken away the control of a state on how to tax or what to tax today we are now it has become so centralized that we don't have much leeway anymore so there is a now a time that has come that see that how this gst is working see now karnataka we contribute one every one rupee that karnataka gives to the center now we are we are getting only 15 paise back earlier we used to get 36 paise back after this new finance commission report we are only getting 15 paise back so we are 
losing a lot of money and for what why because we are uh, controlling our population we are uh, we are uh, we are a better state in terms of administration compared to the uh, other states so uh, these are the factors which are really affecting us so we have to review the way gst is being implemented in, in this country do you think congress will ensure better stability than bjp and accelerate the growth of karnataka's economy as well as bangalore i am very sure of that Okay. Because uh, if you look at the Sidramaiah ji's government, mm. uh, it was a very stable government. Uh, five years we uh, ran the uh, state, and it was uh, uh, with hardly any uh, you know uh, corruption scandals or anything. There were some other issues which the opposition party raised, some law and order issues, some officers who committed suicide or whatever. But apart from that, we had no corruption scandals. We gave good governance. We whatever we had promised, we delivered. We implemented all our manifesto, mm. so it was a much better government, and there was far, far less corruption. Okay. Today, you know, there's a way of saying that corruption is part of the system. Now, I would say the system has become part of the corruption. There is an allegation of adjustment politics between leaders in Bangalore, which clearly demarcated territories, which is the reason why same MLAs get elected from certain areas. What is your comment on this? See, this is something that I think has been spoken about. by many people but it is actually factually not true at all mm -hmm. uh, uh there have been mlas who have been winning and losing some mlas have been being able to retain their seats whether in congress whether in bjp also some of the bjp constituencies are where bjp has been able to become strong at the ground level there some of the constituencies where congress is strong has become we have become very strong there due to the uh, way the vote banks are we do the way the constituency profiles are and there are some constituencies where always there is a fight and they will be close margins and there will be close results and sometimes they win sometimes they lose so i think this is the reason what were the what are the major reasons for low percentage of voting in bangalore see so, you know that has been a problem i think there are two aspects to this one is uh, flawed voters list somehow we have not able to get an accurate voters list so normally i have been noticing in the voters list almost 10% of the voters are not there either they are dead or they moved on or they are not staying there all that so i think this time maybe the voter list will be more accurate so if it, you are, you are almost 10 to 15% is going off there itself okay mm -hmm. then the second thing is apathy of the of the voters especially the more educated and the more uh, uh, some of them young voters uh, young voters also and some of them who are going who are going to colleges and schools they don't seem to be so much interested in what's happening in the political mm -hmm. uh, uh, sphere so that apathy also is another contribution coming to ticket distribution system in the congress there are allegations that some candidates of loyalists of sidramaiya some loyalists of dk shikumar have got ticket there is no there was no transparency in the distribution of ticket is it true see ticket distribution is always uh, a tricky subject mm -hmm. because congress this time because of the situation where uh, uh, there is a lot of hope that congress is going to come back to power mm. lot of demand and lot of competition of course uh, every leader will have their own followers uh, whether it's mr sidramaiah or dk shukumar or any other leader everyone will have some may have more followers some will have less followers so each one will be lobbying for somebody but ultimately this time uh, the acc uh, did it more professionally and that's why if you see there are a few like you said some comments being made about certain candidates but by and large our process has been very more transparent more fair okay congress in karnataka largely seen as uh, many power centers and there are many candidates uh, aspiring to become cm so what's your comment on okay. this see now wanting to become cm there's nothing wrong every politician will have an aspiration mm -hmm. uh, everybody who are Well, so one day I want to become minister, one day I want to become mm -hmm. chief minister, depending upon the circumstance. So nothing wrong in having aspirations, uh, but I think at the end of the day, uh, though this uh, topic has been spoken about continuously for the last two years, that who is going to be the CM and there's a rivalry and then the other people and some other names are cro cropping up. Ultimately, it's been very, it's very clear. All of us want the Congress party to win. All of us want the Congress to form a government here, stable, strong government. So I think. ultimately the choice of the cm will be based upon opinion of the mlas i think what the mlas want uh, that will become a very key factor 
and of course high command will uh, discuss with everybody and uh, will take the final call the party has done multiple surveys uh, several surveys have come out with the several numbers how much uh, party is confident confident of winning seats this time see one thing i can tell you is that we've uh, been improving continuously uh, i would say that uh, every survey that we are doing or we get feedback that we are getting we are only improving okay so that shows that there is a trend to for for us earlier this is a 80 85 90 95 95 100 100 105 105 112 100, 100, 100, 100, you know it's going like that so we are constantly improving and on the ground situation is getting better for us and uh, the feedback is uh, that definitely we should be able to get the magic number and cross it by in a comfortable way so the wave is coming towards the congress okay you said that the party is improving every day yeah. this is just because of you are focusing largely on local issues uh, and ignoring national issues and bjp while focusing largely on national issues see this is a state election so the issues will mainly be state issues okay but the second thing is bjp's national issues is not much but the bjp's issues that they have tried to focus on was again uh, you know on the communal issue, uh, angle which they tried for the last uh, one year they've been trying to bring in that angle somehow whether it was on the savarkar tipu whether it was on the hijab whether it was on uh, muslim traders being banned you know then uh, you know all those things and even mm-hmm. taking a reservation for muslims mm-hmm. so they tried to make it hindu versus muslim so that was a, because they had no other positive points to sell to the people of their own performance mm-hmm. and this was also revealed by mr nalin katil himself which you very well know when you said that mm. don't talk about development talk mm. about these issues mm. so we didn't fall into that trap mm. also we also were careful mm. because we wanted the issues to be what is this government done look at their track record look at the corruption mm. look uh, you know how they performed so that we kept it uh, uh, we have successfully managed to keep it at that okay. and uh, we are talking about what we will do when we come to power mm. so i think they are trying desperately to deviate the subject Mm. we are bringing the subject back to the people's issue okay. yeah and recently the state government has also changed the reservation quota it also it has also scrapped muslim 4% reservation mm. supreme court in fact stayed the implementation of the decision mm. so if congress comes to power will it go ahead with the 4% muslim quota see the removal of the 4% muslim quota actually is an illegal act supreme court yesterday stayed the decision because uh, the Uh, state government's lawyer didn't want to argue the matter if he had argued the matter yesterday uh, they may have carried it on to one, for one more day and they would have come out with the final orders and i i feel that there is no justification the state state government can give on why this 4% was removed they have been uh, misleading the people by by talking about religion thank you that's all from us today keep watching the hindu for more interviews with newsmakers 